Olivier, thanks very much for, for joining us today from Hamburg. One of the topics, Olivier, that, that's come greatly into focus is uh, ESG. Do you think that that's going to be accelerated also um, by the health crisis? I mean, we have a very, very specific view on, on, on this one uh, as a company, and, and I have one as a person, not necessarily as a manager. And actually, we don't think that's necessarily going to accelerate. Uh, what we think is going to accelerate is the communication around it. And unfortunately, not necessarily action around it. Um, and and from my perspective, the whole net zero debate is is a wrong debate um, because it pretends that you can run real estate without emitting carbon. It pretends you can build real estate without emitting carbon. And I know that the net zero advocate will argue, but this is not how net zero is defined. But for me, you know, when you need to look into the definition of something to understand what it is, uh, and that understanding is different from what the terms are, that's the, the definition of marketing. Um, and, and I think that the topic is, is way too important to, to be dealt with with marketing claims. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm not sure they're going to be like massive changes in, in the way we're doing business. Um, there are clearly a number of initiatives out there uh, which are good and going in the right direction. But overall, I, I still feel that this remains kind of a, a smaller part of the business. And that's true on the tenant side. It's true on, on, on the landlord side. Uh, so we, we are working on a number of, of things like this. We are including that in our marketing documentation. Uh, you know, um, and, and our tenants love it when, when we do that. Um, but the real life impact, uh, I think is, I mean, so far it, it's fairly limited and I'm not sure as an industry we have taken uh, kind of, um, we're conscious about uh, how important that is um, and, um, and what we need to do to, to move forward. And my view is um, eventually the carbon and the ESG discussion is about the liability that is sitting on company's balance sheet. And that need to be flushed one way or another. I think the elephant in the room is is really how much it's going to cost, um, and and nobody is really willing to have that conversation. And unless we have that conversation, it's going to be very very difficult to to move that through. And I'm not necessarily speaking about whether tenant or landlord need to pay for it. Uh, I, I think somebody need to pay for it, uh, either the government or the private sector, uh, you know, companies, shareholder, or whoever. But somebody is going to need to to pay for it. Um, and, and I think that's the conversation which, which we are missing today, not only from a political side, but also in, in the corporate uh, landscape. Is this something that requires um, government support? I mean, how do you see this driving forward? To reach the 2030 carbon reduction target, we need to reduce carbon emissions globally as much as we did in 2020, every given year between now and 2050. So we need a COVID crisis every year between now and 2050 to reach the target. And that's kind of the, the gap we're having. And so the discussion we're having within the company is at one stage, aren't we better off just protecting our assets to basically sell the asset that we feel are at risk of flooding and invest in area where we think this is less, less likely. Um, and, and so it, the, 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 at one stage you ask yourself whether or not it still makes sense to try to avoid the train wreck and just protect yourself for the shock, invest in an airbag. And I think this is going to be, again, a, a conversation that's going to take place more and more. If there is no government action, I'm very much pessimistic that we're going to get anywhere. And, and currently, there is no government action, at least not as far as I can see. And is there a role then for the real estate industry sector bodies like EPRA, like INREV, in order to try and promote this? I mean, how do you see that changing, Olivier? I think there is a massive role from the industry saying, actually, not only from the real estate industry, from all the industry saying that, you know, we we are going to hit the wall. Um, we need to do something about it. And we're probably not going to get there by ourselves. We need government to implement like strict, stringent carbon tax. Uh, and we probably need to start lobbying for that. It might sound like we're lobbying against our own interests because, you know, as a company, you tend not to lobby to be taxed, but 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 you know this is I think if if we we really if we're serious about solving the the carbon crisis, this is the only way for for me to to take it further. If if this is not implemented and implemented at the large scale, and 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 by the way, the carbon tax needs to be uh, of of a, a magnitude which is sufficient to actually move the needle. Uh, in Germany, we will have from 2021 onward a 25 uh, euro per ton. Uh, of CO2 carbon tax on everything, including in real estate. But 
at the level of Austria, this is like 15,000 euro a year. It's completely painless. You need to be substantially higher than that to, to be able to make a difference. And I think as, as a, as a, within EPRA, within NREF, uh, within the investment community, I think we should start lobbying for those things. We should start saying, we're just not gonna get there on our own. We need somebody, we, we need a referee to change the rule of the game so the game is going in the right direction. And then you let the market take care of it. You know, once there is enough financial incentive to create a solution for the problem, um, I mean, it, it's just gonna happen. Uh, but we just need those incentives to, to be there. Thanks very much for sharing your views today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.